hello guys welcome to my channel today we're gonna be talking about viruses particularly dna viruses okay um remember we have rna viruses and we have dna viruses um it is your responsibility as a student as a scientist as a researcher whatever it is your responsibility to make sure that you're able to classify viruses into dna versus rna if you don't know how to do that yet go into my previous video watch my previous video because i gave a very nice classification and um, mnemonic about that um so today we're gonna just be dealing with the um dna viruses but before that um how does a virus look like okay so the typical viruses we have two types we have the naked virus so naked and then we have embryo okay so the naked virus the typical naked virus will look like this and then they will have um this um so this is the capsid which is like the wall surrounding the virus and then um they have the nucleic acid inside all right so this shape it is known as the icosahedral let me go over it so we have two two features of viruses so we have the naked virus and then we have the amblyte the typical naked virus looks like this this shape it looks like a hexagon right um we call it the icosahedral so it has this it has the nucleic acid inside and then it, it has the capsid layer surrounding it and then we have the envelope virus so basically the envelope virus is just gonna be this with um a layer around it enveloped so a typical envelope virus will have um, a layer with the capsid and the nucleic acid inside and then they will have these um, kind of proteins for example the coronavirus coronavirus is an envelope virus and um, it has like um, the, the spike proteins um, on the outer membrane which help them so this is the envelope right so on the outer envelope you have the spike proteins which allows them to be able to attach to um to the trachea whatever um to the membranes to membranes especially when they pass to the nostrils and stuff like that to to the bronchi and stuff like that but well so the main goal here is to um realize that there are we have the naked virus and then we have the envelope virus okay so the naked envelope envelope it has um the um a layer extra layer around it okay this is very very important very important um and then you should be able to classify viruses um the dna viruses um so let's quickly do that here so if you watch my previous videos right i said um so when we look at the DNA viruses, the first thing we want to do is divide them into naked. Versus enveloped. Enveloped. So in my previous video, I gave a very nice mnemonic. So um, so for the naked, we use the mnemonic PAP, P-A-P-P, -P -P, like the PAP smear, right? PAP. So we have P, A, P, P. For the envelope, we have HPT, which is high profile PAP. Sorry, HPH. So guys, I'm sorry, I'm really tired today. You know? So um, we have the high profile well so the first p we said was the powerful virus okay the powerful virus the a is adenoma adenoma virus this is papilloma papilloma virus this is polyoma then I mean, I already have this on my previous video. That's why I'm kind of like moving really fast through this because we want to go straight to the different viruses, their features and their 
um, clinical um, symptoms and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> so for the age, we have hepatina. Hepatina. And then we have the pox virus. And then herpes. Herpes virus. All right. So all these viruses are DNA viruses. What are some of the things we said? We said most DNA viruses are double-stranded. They have double-stranded DNA and they are positive signs. Most DNA viruses are double-stranded um, and positive, except for parvovirus. So parvovirus will be single-stranded DNA and it will be a negative sense. All right, so that's one thing that we need to know. Another thing we need to um, understand is they all replicate in the nucleus. So they all have replication. All the DNA viruses, they all have replication, replication in the nucleus, except for the pox virus. So, so the pox virus, instead of the nucleus, it replicates in the cytoplasm. All right, so that's another high yield point. Um, all DNA viruses, replicate um, in the nucleus except for the pox virus which replicates in the cytoplasm all right so let's quickly go over this so we have DNA viruses we have naked we have envelope naked virus pap pap smear p a p p parvo adenoma papilloma polyoma we have the envelope viruses we have the high profile heart Hepatina pox herpes virus, okay? And then um, we spoke about the different um, unique um, exceptions. They are all double-stranded DNA, except for the parvo virus, which is single-stranded DNA in negative signs. And they all replicate in the nucleus, except for the pox virus, which replicates, replicates where? In the cytoplasm. Another thing we can also um, note here is um, we can draw a cycle here. What does this mean? It means that papilloma virus, polyoma virus, hepatina virus, these three viruses, they are circular viruses. So now you have a question um, on an exam, and then in the question stem, it states that no, um, there is a circular double stranded DNA virus. What comes into your mind? Double stranded circular DNA virus. You look for one of these three, okay? So yeah, so now let's go straight to the um, topic for today. So we're gonna start with the parvo virus. Parvo virus. So what was the first thing we said about the par parvo virus? We said that all these viruses are double-stranded DNA virus and they are positive signs as I said for the parvo virus. So the first thing you want to write is, remember these are all high yield points that we are just going over. So this is single-stranded negative signs. Um, another feature is it, 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 it is actually the smallest virus. So we can, another thing we can get from what we said before is it replicates in the nucleus. So is the smallest virus, it replicates in the nucleus. Um, it is um, single-stranded negative signs virus. Okay, so what are some of the clinical presentation, presentations? Um, remember, this is high yield. What does this mean? It means that I'm giving you clues, hence, when you see things in the exams, on the exams, when you see some of these clinical features, you know, you should click, you should click, and then choose that. So the first thing you wanna think or relate to powerful virus is the slap, slapped cheek disease, all right? Um, so slapped, slapped as in someone slaps you, you know, slaps, Slap cheeks or fifth disease. So you are reading a question stem, and then there is a question about um, slap cheek, fifth. 
strep disease, you go for parvovirus, okay? What are some of the things that we can also find? So, first of all, this is um, a disease which goes, um, which can be transmitted from mother feed to fetus, okay? So there is vertical transmission, so it can go from mother to fetus, okay? And um, we can also think about it plastic anemia, causes a plastic anemia. It also causes hydrophytalis. All right. And um, usually it starts from the face and then it moves downwards. So start from face. and moves downward. Guys, if you know all these features about the um, parvo virus, you should get every parvo virus question right. All right, so let's go over. So the parvo virus is a single-stranded DNA virus. It's a, it's a negative sense. It is the smallest virus, okay? Replicates in the nucleus. It is a vertical transmission from mother to fetus. Think about someone slapping you with, it, with all five fingers, slap cheek or feet disease. Think about power virus, aplastic anemia, hydrops fatalis, and um, it starts from the face, and then it starts moving all this, um, and then it starts moving downward, okay? This is all you need to know about the parvo virus. So um, I hope when you get a question on anything related to parvo virus, but the most important, the highest yield is the slap cheek or the fib disease. The moment you, you, you hear about the slap cheek or fib disease, go for parvo virus. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is adenoma virus. All right, so adenoma. Adenoma virus. So for adenoma virus, um, the first thing you wanna think about is um, the transmission. Is um, it is the fecal oral route? Okay, so that's the first thing you wanna think about for adenoma. So fecal oral route. All right. So the, the funny thing is about adenoma virus is it's usually in crowded places, um, especially um, and, and, um, and children are mostly at risk because um, they tend to go to the daycare and they tend to be very crowded. So um, another thing, key feature is um, children, children at risk. So since we're talking about like you know crowded places, it usually also affects military recruits, okay? Because like most of the time when they meet, like they are you know they are usually crowded in one, they are assembled in one environment. So um, military recruits. So on the exam, there is a question stem, and then um, it's talking about military recruits and how there is respiratory droplets, you know. Think about adenoma virus, all right? So some, what are some of the things um, it can cause? Um, think about um, tonsillitis, tonsillitis. So inflammations of the tonsils, when someone do, ah, ah, you know, the tonsils right there. All right, so inflammation of that tonsils, it can be caused by um, adenoma, tonsillitis. That's one of the first things um, it can cause. It can also cause um, viral conjunctivitis. Viral conjunctivitis. Tivitis. Oh, it's summertime. It's really hot. All right. So um, 
It can also cause um, hemorrhagic cystitis. inflammation of the bladder and stuff like that okay so when you have a question stem and the question stem is talking about little children in a crowded environment especially in the playground it's talking about military recruits um, and there is some form of fecal oral transmission um, there is respiratory droplets um, and then the person someone presents um, so someone goes to military recruit, um, someone is recruited into the military, the person comes home and the person ends up with um, tonsillitis, the person ends up with hemorrhagic cystitis, and the person ends up with viral conjunctivitis, then you know we're talking about the normal virus, okay? So these are the, because like the thing about micro is, it's a lot, there are so many viruses, so many bacteria, so you just want to pinpoint the high yield point in every virus. So that when you get to the question stem and you read the clinical vignettes, you should be able to come up, um, have a clue through process of isolation, um, elimination, come up with the right answer. All right. The next one is the um, papilloma virus. Papilloma virus. Papilloma. Remember this also. Um, So without knowing anything about papilloma virus, remember we said, first of all, it's a DNA virus, it's a naked DNA virus. So it is a circular naked DNA virus. What did you say about replication? It will replicate in the nucleus. Remember that, okay? So um, papilloma virus. So for the papilloma virus, we have different numbers associated with them. Um, the first I want to know is, um, remember um, P, one and P4. So we have one and four. So we're gonna separate them into numbers. We have one and four. We have um, six and 11. We have 16 and 18, all right? These are all different strains and they all cause different diseases, all right? So one and four, think about babies, like a child who is between the age of one to four and Think about the um, most of the sun um, um, sitting on the floor and stuff like that. So you can see like common words, you know, common words. So for one and four, so one and four, for six and eleven, um, we have we have laryngeal laryngeal papillomatosis. Papilloma tosis. We also it also causes um warts, but this one is mostly inner, inner genital warts, inner genital warts. And then we have the sixteen to eighteen. All right, so. The thing is, the interesting thing about 16 to 18 is they can actually cause cancer. And it's a very, very high yield cancer because on the exam, they can ask like which, which one causes or which virus can predispose you to cancer. And it's, it's actually papilloma virus. So if you end up with a 16 and 18, you can end up with um, anogenital carcinoma. Inogenital, ano, anogenital, anogenital. Carcinoma. All right. Which is a form of squamous cell carcinoma. So this is a squamous cell carcinoma. Right. Um, it is the most common STD. Most common STD. That's another thing you should remember. Most common STD. So the next time you are having unprotected sex, remember you can end up with um, papilloma virus. Um, and one last thing you want to do is we have um, something called it, um, E6 and E7. You know, remember this is all high yield, so I'm not gonna like go into crazy detail talking about these things. So we have E6 and E7. 
E6 is associated with P53. How do I remember this? Um, this is 6, this is 3. So it helps me to kind of remember 6 and 3, 50, 53, you know, and it's with 3 and E6. And um, E7 and um, is with rest, um, retinal blastoma. All right. We all know P53, right? You know, um, suppressor. All right. So E6 is connected to P53. E7 is connected to retinoblastoma. You know retinoblastoma? You know. All right. It's not. The whole point here is high yield. So when you see a questions term and then um, there is retinoblastoma and then you see E6, E7, you go for E7. When you see um, P53, you know, you choose E6. And stuff like that and also remember you know one and four six and eleven they are all very important but one thing that is very important is the 16 and 18 because they predispose you to cancer squamous cell carcinoma all right all right so think about it so we started from parvo adenoma papilloma now let's look at polyoma 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 virus All right, so polyoma virus is, so <clears throat> the first thing we can do, so we have two types of viruses when it comes to polyoma virus. We have subsets of viruses, but um, without going into anything, polyoma, one thing we can say is a circular naked double-stranded DNA virus, okay? It replicates in the nucleus. Um, so right there, we've been able to come up with some hints or some higher stuff when it comes to polyoma virus. So it is a circular naked double-stranded DNA virus. Um, and another thing is it replicates in the nucleus. Okay. All right, so like I said, we have the JC virus. And then we have the BK virus under polyoma virus, JC versus PA, um, BK. So, um, so for the JC virus, what do they call? Um, we can think about PML. PML. Um, can think about um, CD4 count. So they cause some, um, this is some form of like demyelination disease. Myelin, myelin you know, causes saltatory conduction from, um, it helps um, the action potential to jump from one node to another node, which will help with the speed of the action potential. So when you end up with a JC virus, um, you end up with some form of myelolicopathy, which is a um, demyelination disease. So I'm gonna put it here, demyelination demyelination and and you are more predisposed to this if your cd4 count is less than 200 all right so you are more prone or susceptible to gc virus if your um, cd4 cd4 count is less than 200 cd4 count is less than 200 so you have a question stem and then there is JC virus. What do you look for? PML. Always look for PML. Sometimes you can end up with a BK virus. So when you end up with a BK virus, what are some of the things you think of? You think of um, neuropathy or nephro, nephropathy. Um, all right, so nephro. When you think about ne the nephron, what comes into mind? Kidney, yeah. Nephropathy. You can also end up with hemorrhagic cystitis. What other virus can end up with hemorrhag um, hemorrhagic cystitis? Remember, adenoma virus. So you have a question stem. There is hemorrhagic cystitis. You can just jump in and choose um, adenoma virus. Um, look. Um, in the same question stem, they're gonna talk about some virus, which is a circular virus, because 
polyuma virus and um, adenoma virus they both cause the um they both cause hemorrhagic cystitis so in order to be able to um go through the process of elimination look for circular circular because polyuma is circular um, adenoma is not circular all right plus look for bk virus okay so this is all you need to know about the polyuma virus now think about it we've dealt with parvo virus adenoma virus papilloma virus polyuma virus we have three more dna viruses to go through three more all right just these are the highest subject because like it's different when you are in school in school you they they they, they this this phd professors they throw so much material at you you know but for the board exam my lectures are more tilted out towards the board exam for the board exam knowing this is enough i passed my board exam and how because i knew these keywords like this these higher points once you know all these higher points trust me you will not be able to get any micro questions wrong i i i believe i got most of my micro questions right um people use catching micro it is good but it wasn't helping me because i had to also um remember the pictures and stuff like that it was just too much for me but if you are able to break it down like this go step by step it becomes very easy very easy what's the smallest dna virus power virus all right so should go over i'm not sure if i should um erase this or just like turn over and deal with i think i'm gonna turn around turn this over so we will talk about the last three viruses um don't let this three fool you all right because this is a lot it's a lot uh, for example, um, herpes virus is a lot. There are so many subsets of viruses under herpes virus. But then we have hepatina virus. Um, now let's do it, hepatina virus. Oh, no, I don't want to bend, so I'm just going to rotate this around. So let's start with Hepatna. You know, Hepatna is so fancy, but we all know Hepatna virus. We all taking the shots. Have you heard? Have you ever heard of the Hepatitis B virus? Yeah, that's the fancy word for Hepatitis B, Hepatna virus. So, you know, you we all know about you know Hepatitis B virus. So let me quickly draw like the summary here so that we we don't lose track of where we are going. So. We started with our DNA viruses. We had our naked. And then we had our envelope. So for the naked, we spoke about the parvo virus. We spoke about adenoma virus. We spoke about papilloma. We spoke about polyoma. For the envelope, we talked about, we now about to talk about hepatina. There is the pox. And then we have um, the herpes. And then these ones are circular. Polyoma, um, papilloma, hepatina. Yeah. So um, the reason why I did this is to help me, you know, this is my blueprint. It helps you go into order. So now we are at this point, Hepatina virus, which is Hepatitis B virus. What are some of the higher points of Hepatina? Hepatitis B virus. All right, so Hepatitis B. Um, the first thing we have to realize is it's a sexually transmitted disease, so it's an STD. All right, so this is an STD. Um, it is vertical transmission, vertical transmission. So it can go from mother to fetus. Remember, high yield, high yield, high yield. You don't want to lose track of the high yield point. Um, so. What are some of the things we can um, get um, from hepatitis B virus? Hepatitis B virus 
you can end up with a rust. Um, you can end up with um, arthritis. Arthritis. They cause poly arthritic nodosa. Arthritic nodosa. All right. Um, so when you, when you do the lab work for um, hepatitis B, when a person comes in and the person has hepatitis B and you do lab work, one key feature you're gonna see is uh, they'll be rising ALT, ALT. Um, this is an enzyme. I think it's alanine transaminase, um, transaminase, which is like I mean biochemistry. We probably we probably gonna talk about it. It causes a super infection with um, hepatitis D virus. So when a person has hepatitis B, D, D, D as in dog virus, and the person gets exposed to hepatitis B virus, the person ends up with um, a very dire situation, super infection, infection with hepatitis D virus. Okay. Um, one thing one thing one question they mostly ask is um the viral surface antigen you know the viral surface antigen you know they usually ask a lot all right so the virus the viral surface antigen is hepatitis b surface um So this is another topic, right? So for the um, for for hepatitis B, there is a whole session that we can go through. That will be for another time. Today, I just wanna like just briefly go over the high yield points for every virus. So we're not gonna go into detail, you know. But just know that you know the hepatitis B surface um, antigen looks like this. So how do we treat um, hepatitis B? A person comes in and the person has hepatitis B. How do you treat it? Um, you can treat hepatitis B. First of all, um, it has immunity, right? So you can develop immunity against hepatitis B. Or you can also use um, lamivudine. So for treatment, you can get immunization uh, vaccinated. Um, you can get the hepatitis B vaccine. Um, there is also another medication is called the lamy. It's kind of like yeah, lamy then lamy. All right. So this is mostly um, some of the key things we know. Um, you can tell when it comes to hepatitis B on the exam when um, a person comes in with sexually transmitted. The person has polyarthritic nodosa, the person ends up with a rash, arthritis of some sort, and stuff like that. Think about, um, and then there is elevated DLT. Think about hepatitis B virus. All right, let's talk about the pox virus. What are some of the things we said about the pox virus? So one thing we said was that um, the parvo virus, this is the smallest virus, guess what? The pox virus is the largest virus. It is the largest. Remember, this is very important. It is the largest virus. Um, we also made a very important, unique exception when it came to the pox virus. We said all the DNA viruses um, replicate in the nucleus, except for the pox virus. So they replicate in the cytoplasm. So they replicate in cytoplasm. Um, what can we also say? So they have their own um, RNA polymerase. So um, they are able to produce all the proteins they need for replication. Okay, so they are very unique. They have their own RNA polymerase um, to um, establish their own. Uh, one thing is, um, so when someone ends up with 
a pox virus, right? And you end up with a rash. But they are all of the same age. They all look very similar. You don't you don't find one rash which looks like which comes to be, and then the next day there is another rash. It's like they are all of the same age. They all look very similar. You know that's one key thing because we also have shingles and stuff like that, which also presents with rash. When we um, talk about bacteria, um, we we're gonna be talking about the rickettsia and um, all these bacterial infections which also presents with rashes. One thing about um, the pork virus is all these rashes are of the same age. Uh, they look very, very similar. So rash of same, same age. Um, or race can lesions. All right. Another high yield point is an inclusion bag. It's called the granary. Granary inclusion bag. This is very high yield. Granary inclusion bag. So you are reading a question stem, and then there, the moment you see granary, just just put this word in your mind. Granary. 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 Granary, think about pox virus. Granary, think about pox virus. If there is if there is ever a question on pox virus, you will end up seeing the binary inclusion body. You are going to end up with raised lesions of same age. Or there is a very large virus which has its own replication enzymes and stuff like that. Think about pox virus, okay? What are some of the things pox virus can cause? Um, it's called the molluscum conjunctosum. Oh my God, this word is crazy. Molluscum, molluscum contagiosum. You know, if if you wanna see how this looks like, the best thing is to um, Google right now. Um, so this is a flesh-colored, dome-shaped, complicated lesion on the trunk. All right, uh, let me just write it. Um, but if you want to see a picture, you can just like Google it. So it is a flesh colored, colored, doom, doom, doom shaped, doom, flesh colored, doom shaped. All right, umbilicated lesions on the trunk, umbilicated. Um, Lesions on trunk. So, um, so for the pox virus, um, remember we have the vaccine. So, um, so there are different types. You have the smallpox, for example. Um, most of these um, viruses have been able to be er eradicated by means of vaccine, okay? So it is very, very important. Some of the ways we can treat or get rid of pox virus is to get vaccinated, um, all right? I know I'm getting, I'm beginning to get tired. So we're gonna, so we've gone all the way. So we're gonna tackle herpes virus and then we will call it a day. And then next time we'll talk about the RNA viruses, okay? Um, and, and for the herpes virus, we have a lot. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight viruses under um, herpes virus. So we're gonna quickly go over them and tackle the higher point. So let's go over the first one. The first one is herpes simplex virus one. All right, so herpes simplex virus one. Um, what are some of the higher points? Is transmitted through sex. So transmission via sex. All right. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, the highest key point for this one, always look at where they are latent. All right. So for the happy simplest virus, the first one is latent in the trigeminal ganglia. Latent in trigeminal.
thank God. Remember, latent in the five germinal ganglia. It is um so this via sex also saliva and it's one of those touch infections you know we have touch infections you know we have um, toxoplasmosis we have added rubella and you know histoplasmosis and stuff like that all right and it's one of those touch infections these are infections which affect children mostly it affects children mostly so happy simplest virus one is transmitted through sex saliva is one of those touch infections it's latent in the trigeminal ganglia Remember for um, pulp virus, we said we have the um, guanary incretion body. So for this one, we have the caudary. Caudary. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's, it's more like caudary bodies. Caudary bodies. Make sure you have it. So what are some of the diseases that this can um, cause? Um, so we want to talk about the first one is lip herpes leg herpes all right keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis temporal lobe so um lip herpes remember it's saliva so it's not surprising all right so um and then we have um, temporal lobe encephalitis temporal they also cause temporal lobe so they actually affect the brain Part of the brain called the temporal lobe. So temporal lobe, um, what do I call it? Temporal lobe encephalitis. Encephalitis. We have keratu keratu conjunctivitis. Like I said before, if you can read it, just kind of like zoom it into your uh, uh, into your video and be able to read it. So, on the question stem, um, a patient presents with um, herpes infection. The person has um, um, a virus which is latent in the trigeminal ganglia. The person has cowboy inclusion bodies. They have hip um, lip herpes. They have um, ker conjunctivitis. They have temporal lobe encephali encephalitis. You are thinking about happy simplest virus one. Happy simplest virus one. These are like easy questions, so you want to make sure. Um, so the way, some of the ways we can treat, we can use acyclovir, acyclovir, you know, to help treat or reduce the symptoms. And then we have happy simplest. HSV2. So where do we want to, another thing we want to see is, so if this one is latent in the trigeminal ganglia, where is this one latent? So this one is latent or is dormant? It is dormant in the sacral ganglia. Listen, every question I have seen about these viruses, they were asking about this. Actually, these are very, very important. If you will forget anything, don't forget the difference between HSV1 and HSV2 because it can get very, very confusing. HSV1 is um, trigeminal ganglia. HSV2 is dormant in the sacral ganglia. What are some of the things we can also think about? Is this causes meningitis, so it you end up with. Oh, and another thing, we have the zinc smear. Zinc smear. Remember how Pox had um, granary inclusion bodies? This one has the cowdery bodies. We have the zinc smear. And then remember we said it causes um, meningitis. 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 That is for HSV2. Then we have HSV3 or herpes simply virus 3. Herpes HSV3. Three is um, Epsom Bar virus. So I'm pretty sure you've heard about Epsom, Epsom Bar virus, EBV. Yeah, it is Herpes Simplice virus 3 or HVV. 
right? HIV, right? So, kissing. This is called a classical kissing disease. So, um, when you see kissing on the question stem, you know, like a person went on a date with some fancy woman he met online, and then when the guy met with a woman, they ended up kissing, and a few days later, you know, the person was exposed to some kind of virus, and then they started exhibiting symptoms that we're going to be talking about. Then you know it is kissing disease, um, and most of the time it's HHB, which is Epstein, Epstein Barr virus. So, um, another very, very important high yield point when you take histology and you look at the histology of the Epstein Barr um, virus, they look, they have this our appearance, our eye appearance under histology. So you associate this with kissing and our eye. Our eye appearance kissing disease or HHV. All right. All right, so this person is going to end up with oral hairy nucleopia. Oral hairy nucleopia. This is kissing, so most of the time, or most of the things are gonna be um, affect. Um, let's see. So we can end up with um, splenomegaly, which is enlargement of the spleen. So we can end up with splenomegaly. But guys, the most important thing I want you guys to take out from this is on the question stem: kissing and our eye appearance. Um, you can end up with the oral hairy leukoplakia which affects the tongue and then you can scratch it off and it looks like whitish. Um, you can end up with enlargement of the spleen. Um, you can also end up with um, infectious um, myositis. And um, so this one, it actually attacks the um, cytotoxic T cells. That's another thing. So it affects the T cells. All right. The cytotoxic T cells. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is the cytomegalovirus. The cyto, I'm gonna put it here, cytomegalovirus, which is it, it is it, this is happy simplex virus four. So the fourth one is uh, cytomegalovirus. So this is the most common, most common fetal virus, viral infection. The most common fetal viral infection. Guess what? This also ends up with the owl eye appearance. So watch out for this as well. It also ends up with the um, eye owl. And um, another thing we can, um, take from here is is the number one cause of mental retardation from virus this is very interesting right who knew that we can end up with mental retardation from viruses yeah science is always weird someday. all right so it's the number one number one so someone you read a question stem the person comes with mental retardation the person has well, our eye appearance Come on, man. And then we're talking about someone who is like an infant. Then you know we're talking about number one cause of mental retardation. Mental retardation. From virus. All right. Um, you can do a monospad test. All right. So... That's another thing you can see in the clinical vignette. So um, we have a monospat test and then it comes back as negative. You do a monospat test and it's negative. 
all right so i think these are like the high yield point but one thing what are some of the things that this can cause it can you can end up with um jaundice jaundice so you think about jaundice jaundice you know jaundice yellow discoloration of the eye the person comes in so you see all these keywords are very very important can I come up, can end up with a person coming in with mental retardation um i mean there is mental retardation in the question stem there is our eye um the person has jaundice and stuff like that come on he's talking about um cytomegalovirus then we have um the fifth one the fifth one which is varicella zoster um which is chicken pox varicella 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 all right so this is chicken pox where is this one latent so this one is latent in the dorsal root ganglia latent in dorsal root ganglia drg dorsal root ganglia if it's left untreated, you end up with shingles. So it starts from chicken pox, and then you end up with shingles. Um, you end up with rashes. So remember, for the two, you see how for the pox virus, all the um, rashes were of the same age, similar sizes, shapes, and stuff like that. This is very different. So you end up with, so when you end up with chicken pox, you have um, rashes which are of different ages, sizes, shapes, and stuff like that. So that's um, one thing you can also um, take note of you end up with a rash but then they, they have different stages some are healing faster than others and stuff like that another um, higher point you can see is the zang cell um, um, so another keyword you can take is the zang smear remember um, so when we're talking about HSV2, we had the zinc smear in HSV2, now we have it in the varicella too. So what's going to help us? We need to know where each one is. Um, <clears throat> so when patients come, the patient do lab work, you see a zinc smear. Wow. Then you're thinking about zinc smear, you're thinking about HSV2, and then you're thinking about varicella. Now, what in the question stem is going to help you come up with the right answer? We're going to be talking about the stages where they are dormant or latent. So in the question stem, first of all, they all have um, zinc smear, right? But um, when it comes to the varicella, one thing that we see is, is do, um, dormant in the dorsal root ganglion. All right, dorsal root ganglion. And then when it comes to the HSV2, you know that it's dormant in the trigeminal ganglion. These are the things, you know, it is very important to boil down into details, like go into details. But if you know, like, you know, the, the foundation, the basics like this, it helps you to eliminate so many um, wrong answer choices and come up with the right answer. So that is for um, varicella. Causes chicken pox, which leads to shingles. Well, we have two more, right? Now, finally... We have two more to go and the journey of the DNA viruses will finally come to an end. And let's look, um, um, where do we go? So, so for the sixth one, HSV6, it's called Roseola, Rosio, Roseola, Roseola. Herpes simplex virus 6 is called the roseola. Roseola. This is a fancy word, fancy word for herpes simplex virus 6. Um, so this is a very funny virus. First of all, it has it attacks CD4 cells. So the first thing you want to think about is CD4. It will attack the CD4 T cells and kill them. Um, it usually affects people between the ages of 6 months and 2 years. Um, six months to two years so it affects infants between the ages of six months and two years um, so there is a fever right there is a, a, a um, so you have a four-month-old baby 
So someone, so in the in the classical question stem, there is a four months, five months, a baby all up to the age of two years old. And then this person comes with a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit and the person has been dealing with the fever for the past four days, the past four days. And then the person also ha and, um, has a rash that spares the face. All right, the funny thing about this rosiola is Think about it this way, roseola, it sounds very beautiful, rose, roseola, like some kind of like flower. I don't know what roseola means, but it sounds like some form of like rose flower. It actually sounds like a beautiful name. Um, that you have a daughter, your, your, your infant child presents into the hospital. The, the child comes in with a fever that they've been experiencing for the past four days. You check their temperature for the past four days has been around hovering around 104 degrees from the right and and this patient comes in and then you talk to the patient um the parent of of this infant and the parent will tell you that um besides the fever for the past what is the patient also have rashes all over the body but the face will be spread think about roseola think about roseola um besides attacking cd for six months to two years so temperature High temperature or fever over four days. Fever over four days. And then they have a rash which will spread the face. Rash which spreads face. Okay. All right. Maculopapula rash which will spread the face. We have the last one. Let me just the last one here which is happy simplex virus 8 so the eighth one is called the um kaposi sarcoma all right so kaposi kaposi sarcoma kaposi sarcoma do you know which patients end up with happy simplex virus 8 HIV AIDS patients. So patients who are AIDS patients are more likely to have Kaposi sarcoma. So you have a question stem with an HIV um, or with an AIDS patient um, who comes in. The, the reason is because the person is, is immunocompromised. All right, there is immunosuppression. All right, so you want to use HIV. Um, why do I keep saying HIV? You want to use AIDS, AIDS therapy to tackle the ACE part, all right? Um, Kaposi sarcoma will cause B cell lymphoma. Remember, this is cancerous, B cell lymphoma. Now, you see, out of all these DNA viruses we've been talking about, there are two which predisposes you to cancer. Remember, there was papilloma virus. Remember, it was 16 and 18. They will present the, um, predispose you to um, a squamous cell carcinoma. All right. And then we have the Kaposi sarcoma, which will also end up causing a B cell lymphoma. And it usually attacks ACE patients. All right. Um, these are the higher points. I know I left a lot of things in between detail, detail, details. But on the board exam, it's not about detail. It's about being smart, being fast. It's about learning smart, not learning hard. If you learn hard, you're gonna be boiling into all those crazy details. If you learn smart, you end up with things like this. You end up with a, a very nice table, like, you know, go be able to um, separate all the different viruses. So the first thing you do, like we did, separate into DNA, RNA, know which one is naked, which one is envelope, and then go from Pavo all the way to herpes. Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, like we've covered. So I hope this video helped you. Um, so this covers all the higher points you need for the board exam when it comes to DNA viruses. So on my next video, I'll be talking about the RNA viruses. You see, I'm, I'm very tired. That's why, um, because I just came from my clinical rotation and I was like, it's been almost a year since um, I posted a video. So let me start posting one video every day um so i hope this helps you and please if my writing is very small make sure um you zoom in so you can see very clearly if um i have an accent i understand so um 
if you if you don't understand a certain word i said um i make sure i write everything down so just go over everything and you can also use this as a study guide to help you so that you know more or more of like a map you know when you are studying hsv2 you know where it, it, it to place it under whether dna or rna whether it's naked or enveloped you know stuff like that so take care god bless you and i'll see you in the next video Take care. Bye-bye.